Hello everyone, and welcome to my review of the Audio Quest Dragonfly USB DAC preamp and um, headphone amp. So, just to start off as a little background, I'd like to talk about who Audio Quest are. Um, they're kind of known derisively um, because they tend to release like I don't know, like really expensive USB and HDMI cables which is a very controversial topic in you know audiovisual communities <laughs> so I'm not going to comment on that but I like to just talk about this specific product which is also made by them called the Dragonfly and this is the second one that's come out the 1.2 original 1.0 and they're quite similar actually but I'll just talk about some of the differences and what I think of this product and yeah, so this is the box it comes in. But how big can it possibly be if it looks like a USB, right? Well, that's nearly life size because here it is. This is it. This is, let me hold it straight away up the AudioQuest Dragonfly. And it comes in this little leather pouch to put it in. Now, this is a USB DAC and, um, you know, headphone amp, but now you wonder how much can this possibly power if it's USB powered, like can you run your uh, planar magnetic, uh, orthodynamic sort of headphones on this, will they run properly, will it be proper, how can this compete with something that's a solid brick unit left powered with like a wall crawler or something, you know, how can this compete, well, I'll get to that, first of all, um, I don't usually like talking about price, but I will mention that this is quite pricey. Um, it's usually around $150, 123 pounds, uh, because everything in England is more expensive. But at least we're having sunny weather today. So, um, yeah, the Dragonfly. So this entire, let's just see what's in the box actually, because this is quite a nice. Uh, solid large box way larger than you know you think for something this small so let's open it up now what do you get inside well you get what is this exactly get 15 percent off your first order oh i just revealed the code oh oh well oh wait already expired too bad guys too bad but yeah, HD tracks, I have a few of their stuff. They're pretty good. They don't sound as natural as vinyl still, but pretty good. And yeah, a booklet with this very nice logo of a dragonfly on them. Um, open it up. You see instructions, obviously, for the Mac. Windows 7 and 8. Did this come out? Yeah, I think this came out before 10. But you know, same thing, really. Yep, and a limited warranty statement, which I haven't filled out or anything, so don't know anything about that. Is there anything else in this box? No. So quite an empty box. Like you can, if you found this in a store, you just shake it around and you hear like, oh, there's nothing, really nothing in there. Well, it's a big box. And it's solid. Uh, it's a little excessive, but hey, the price is a bit high, so if they can take out, you know pull out all the stops to keep it nice and premium looking and safe I guess they can do it this way alright the dragonfly I'm just gonna put the box down and just talk about this now this makes an audible difference you if you're especially if you're using it with let's say a laptop which doesn't even have like an immense motherboard. Um, some of the newer motherboards try to keep the the sound, you know, the sound technology, so called, away from the other components. So they kind of um, the electrical noise doesn't really mess up so much. But laptops, that's really hard to do. So laptops can get quite muddy. This clears it up. <laughs> This is like, I don't know, this is like penicillin 
when you have something you need penicillin for. Yep, basically. You plug this into your computer and you'll just immediately you'll hear the difference like the clarity like let me give you an example let's say Pink Floyd Comfortably Numb the intro of that song it starts off very subdued very um, low-key Roger Waters starts singing that part you hear a little vocal you hear a little um, instrumental stuff going on around you besides just the bass and the drums and the atmospheric synthesizer you will hear some things but you don't hear them that cl I couldn't hear them that clearly using any of my headphones on my laptop just using the regular sound out or headphone out jack this clears it right up and it makes them very very clear like you'll hear like this little um really like one note picked on the guitar very very softly which goes from left to right channel like ding 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 like that really quickly <laughs> sorry for that um this makes it clear and stick out and in your face and you're like wow i never really heard that before if you've only been using your laptop that is so definitely i can say there's a difference like you know some people might say oh is there really a difference with that dax and stuff yep there's a difference but now let's talk about what it can run if you just use this as your um primary source uh, sound driver of your computer you can run all your files that are necessary um, but it will downscale 24-bit 192 hertz files it'll downscale them to 24-bit 96 that's the highest this goes it will run them if you have it set as your primary sound driver but if you want to bypass all that and if you're like me sometimes who you want to use like let's say wasapi or asio drivers and you run your foobar and make the output to Vasapi. This will not play anything over 2496. So let that be known. If you want it to play and downscale songs, you'd have to use them as a primary driver, not Wasapi. Wasapi can only go up to 2496 because Wasapi is bit perfect and it doesn't try to, I will just say, it doesn't try to fool you or anything. It just tells you what is and what can, what can and what can't be played by your DAC. Okay. So, um, when this plays different music, it changes uh, different, um, let's say 44.1, um, 48, uh, 96. It has different colored dragon, like this dragonfly, it'll light up in different colors. I believe that the highest it goes up to, the 96, is magenta. Uh, the regular one is either blue or green, and then 48 is blue or green, I'm not... Like, I'm sorry, but I don't remember which ones exactly, but they just change color based on what you're playing through them. Also, if you run it through your primary sound driver, it'll always be magenta. If you want that aspect, you have to use um, Wasapi drivers so you can see that, yeah, okay, right now I'm playing like this or that. Also, when you use Wasapi drivers, and let's say you go from a song that is 96 um, hertz, 24 bit, to a CD quality 44.1 hertz song. Well, this takes like a second to change over and you hear it's like a crossfade. It, the sound goes, then opens back up again. And you're like, it, oh, my Dragonfly just audibly changed what it's doing, rewired what it's doing to play another like quality file or another bit rate, which, um, I'm not sure if that's a like if that's a bad thing or if it's I mean, it's not a good thing obviously but I'm not even gonna call it a bad thing because you know for the f small form factor I'm guessing there is must be some trade-off like you can't instantly switch through files like it'll take one second one second guys you can wait one second I suppose um, okay so it also it runs quite hot um, I have it plugged into an external USB. Um, you know, eight ports powered, by the way, so I can just comfortably use it. So yeah, eight ports powered. You do need to. It does get a little warm, but not so warm that you're like worried about it. But that's also something you should think about. Uh, another thing, as you can see, it only has a 3.5 millimeter jack. That is all. That is all. No other settings. There's no other buttons or switches or anything else. Uh, I just opened it for the first time. Yep, just a standard USB. So the, no other switches or anything. It just has this one jack. 
So I would not recommend putting a heavy headphone cable on top of this jack and then just using it like that because you know it might make it fall, might uh, bend this. You don't want to damage this. This is, like I said, quite expensive and quite good. You don't want to ruin it. So what I would recommend is you can either buy something to extend the USB, like a little dongle. Like I know that um, they AudioQuest themselves sell that, but you know you can just easily buy one third party off of Amazon too. I have this. This is a Grotto cable, 3.5 to you know, 1.4, 1 slash 4. Just plug this in, leave it over there, you just plug your headphones in here so they don't disturb this. It doesn't disturb where it's standing, everything's fine. Okay, now what can this drive? That's a good question. Um, any IEMs, obviously, they can drive. Any um, portable headphones like my DT 1350s, um, quite a difference using these and using because they're 80 ohms. Quite a difference using this with them and just using a normal uh, DAC on my uh, portable devices. Also, um, to an extent, it can drive my HE 400i. It's a very it's a very interesting thing because it gives me a very clear and pleasing sound when I'm listening to classic rock with this. But if I switch over to pop or rap or anything like that, it gets quite sibilant and the bass is not what I know it can be on those headphones. Like I know the headphone has good bass. This doesn't bring that out so much. But for classic rock, this gives a more clarity, which I found very you know interesting and unique. Um, my Vibro by ZMF, which is a T50 RP mod. No, no, this can't do that justice. No, not at all. So, to sum up, this can drive up to what I would guess... Hmm, without going into planar magnetic land, this would drive up to... Maybe an HD 600 by Sennheiser? 300 ohms? Maybe. Um, of course, the HD 800 is also, I think, 300 ohms, but, you know, we're not talking about that. That's a very picky headphone. But this can do a decent job with those, um... Basically, you guys, this is portability. You can't get more portable than a USB stick. And, you know, thick but nice USB stick. If you're going to visit, let's say, your grandparents somewhere, you're going to be away from your home, and you want to take a good pair of headphones with you, but you don't want to... But they do need something to drive them. And your laptop can't do it. This is it. This is what you'll take with you. So to sum up, do I think this is a good purchase? Yeah, I do. Price is a little high, but you do get what you pay for in the sound quality difference. Um, but it's a very unique reason that you buy this, for portability. For home use, no, I would not recommend this. I'd recommend getting an actual DAC. So that's been my review, and thank you for watching, and see you next time.